I'm going to be reading from Matthew 24. You ready, Blue? Come on. I've got a short passage of scripture from God's Holy Bible that I'm going to read tonight. And then we're going to pray and I'm going to preach God's word. You know this passage of scripture when I, I'm a minister, I'm from the church in Barnsley. You know I've been saved for 11 years, thank God, and God's done so much in my life. You know this passage of scripture tonight that I'm going to preach from is one of my favourite gospels because this passage of scripture tonight from Matthew 24 and verse 36 I'm going to preach about it's something that every man and every woman on, on the face of this earth can relate to that we've heard about and that we can apply to our life if we listen this is what the word of God says no one knows about that day or hour not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of Noah, before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Amen. My Lord, I just pray tonight, God. Lord, that tonight by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would use me tonight as your mouthpiece. I pray, Lord God, tonight that you would open hearts and minds of these people who's listening. The people tonight on the recording, the people on this site tonight who's, who doesn't really want to know. But Lord God, your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Your word pierces the heart. And Lord God, I pray tonight that through your servant, me, your mouthpiece, that you would speak to people's lives, Lord. My God, I pray tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name tonight. You know this Bible that I preach from is the same scriptures as in your Bible that you have in your trailer, that you have in your cupboards. And you know this passage of scripture tonight for the ones who's not familiar, it's about the coming of Jesus. But that's not tonight. What I'm going to hit home on, what I want to expand from on this scripture tonight is, as it was in the days of Noah before the flood, that the people was just carrying on. So the people knew nothing about what was going to happen. They didn't listen. They were just carrying on, doing the daily life. And they knew nothing about what would happen until a flood came. But I want to tell you tonight, that today, 2020, that people is just carrying on. People is just doing the business. Going to places they want to go. Living the life they want to live. Carrying on up and down, doing what they want. Just like it was in the days of Noah. And tonight you might say, what's that got to do with me? Tonight, what, what, what hour is this going to help me tonight? But I want to tell you tonight that the Bible says, in the days of Noah, that God looked down upon the earth, that God, his heart was pained, that he was grieved that he had made man, because mankind, what God created was so sinful, because mankind had got so wicked and so corrupt and so selfish, carrying on about wrong business, not thinking about God, not thinking about living right, but living for themselves. Selfish people, liars, cheats, adulterers, people just carrying on, doing all the wrong and not caring about God, forgetting all about God, robbing, stealing and cheating. These people that, was, that were so wicked, the Bible says these people, mankind, that they were so wicked that it hurt God's heart and he said, I'm going to have to put an end to this. God said, I'm going to have to put an end to this. This can't carry on. This isn't how it was supposed to be. This wasn't the plan. This wasn't what I wanted. God didn't want these people to be like this. So God, as we know, he told a righteous man, the only righteous man, there was only Noah, his wife and his sons and their wives. And he told Noah to build a hag. He told Noah that there was safety. He told Noah that there was a flood coming, that the world was going to be destroyed, that the world that we know was coming to an end. And he said, Noah, I want you to build a hack. I don't want you to get on board the hack because I'm going to start again and there's going to be a new world and a new life and you're going to be part of it. Build the ark. Build the ark and bring on the animals and bring your family. I don't want to tell you, the Bible says in the book of Peter, that Noah, he was a righteous man. That he was a preacher of righteousness. 
And I believe that Noah, as he was building that ark for the years and years and years that he was building, I believe he would have been preaching to the people. He would have been telling the people that they need to, they need to turn away. That there's a flood coming. That God's warned that there's a, there's a flood coming that he's going to destroy the world. That there's danger coming. And I believe that he would have been preaching to the people as he was going along. And he was trying his old best to build this ark. And his family would have, would have been sharing and the women would have been chatting. And they would have been saying, do you know what God's told, told me father-in-law? Do you know what God's told me husband? He's told them that there's a flood coming that the world is going to be destroyed. And he's building a ark. And there's safety in the ark that we need to get on the ark. That we need to be ready. That we need to leave the wickedness. And we need to turn to God. I believe these people that would have been sharing. Because I want to tell you tonight, when we've got God, when we've got Jesus living with our heart, we want to share. We want to tell people. We want to tell people the good news. People will tell you they've got religion, but they never want to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People will tell you that they've got religion, that they've got a God. But their life's never changed, their life's never different. They carry on robbing, stealing, cheating, lying, living for the self, gossiping. But people will tell you that they've got God. People will laugh at you. Just like in the days of Noah, they would have been laughing. They would have been mocking, saying, look at this old fool. This old fool's been told. This old fool's telling us that the world's going to end. This old fool's telling us there's going to be a flood. And the people that would have laughed, they would have mocked. Do you know what they would have done if they had trailers in them days? They would have went in and closed the doors. They wouldn't have come out and listened. They would have went in and they closed the doors. They'd probably put the tellies on. They'd put the music on so they didn't have to listen. But I want to tell you, my friends, tonight, these people who nothing about the flood until it come upon them. These people, they didn't want to listen. These people, they didn't want to know. Just like we see today. So many people today, they don't want to know. They don't want to listen. We tell people that they need Jesus. We tell people that they need to repent. We tell people week in, week out, year in, year out, Jesus is coming. And tonight I don't know when he's coming. I don't know and that's not what I'm preaching about tonight. But I know he's coming soon because the word tells me. How soon is soon? I don't know. But I know it was sooner than yesterday. I know it was sooner than a couple of weeks ago. And you know the Bible talks about signs. The Bible talks about what will happen. What will be the build up to the end? When the end is coming, when the end is near, what will be going on? And I want to tell you tonight, look at your Bible. Look at your Bible and put on the news. And you tell me when the end is coming. You tell me how near we are. Read the Bible and put on the news. I want to tell you people tonight who's listening on this ground. People on the recording. Jesus is coming soon. I don't know when, but I know one thing. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to be ready of the coming of the Lord. Was we ready for this, this uh, situation that we're in? Nobody was ready. Nobody was listening. We was told that there was a, there was a big outbreak of this, this virus coming. It was going to be dangerous. The people need to keep in. The people need to stock up on a bit of shopping. The people need to keep in and keep away from everybody. But you know what? Nobody listens. Nobody wants to listen. You find very few who wants to listen. People want to carry on about the daily life because they think nothing's going to happen to me. Nothing's going to happen to my family. We are invincible. I want to tell you nobody's invincible. I want to tell you tonight it doesn't matter what nationality you are tonight. I want to tell you it doesn't matter what colour you are tonight. We aren't protected from nothing tonight without Jesus. You know these people, the Bible says in the days of Noah, these people, until a flood was upon them, the flood was there to these people who didn't listen. I can just imagine now. I can imagine that when the water started coming, when the rain started coming down, maybe when the rain got a couple of, when the water got a couple of feet high, they would have started to think, do you know something? That old man, that old fool, he was right. That old man, where's the, where's the ark now? Where's this boat that Noah tells us about? Where is this God? But the Bible says that the door was closed. That God closed the door. That God put the people in. And I want to tell you, church, people, listening, brothers, sisters, friends, on this ground tonight, people on the internet, there's a time coming. There's a time coming for, for mankind when it's going to be too late. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Today is the day that we need to listen. We need to be ready. We need to be right with God today because nobody's promised tomorrow. 
And I don't come here tonight to scare people. I don't come here tonight to put fear in you. But I come tonight to tell you there's good news and there's a way out tonight. I don't come tonight to tell you that you're going to be okay. I come to preach the truth. And the truth is this. There's no flood coming this time. There's no boat to get upon. But I want to tell you, death is crouching at the door, church. People tonight, death is just around the corner. The coming of the Lord is just around the corner. But what must we do? What is the answer? I want to tell you tonight, people who's listening, we must repent of our sins and accept Jesus while we have the chance. You know, the good news of the gospel is this, that Jesus Christ, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ, he came to die for sinners. We need a saviour. We need a, a refuge. We need a safety tonight, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And we can have Jesus tonight. You know, tonight, uh, I'm not preaching tonight about a hark and a flood coming, but I want to tell you what I'm preaching tonight, that Jesus is coming, and you need to be ready. How do we be ready? By repenting of our sins. You know, that's uh, some of the people don't want to hear about. People like to hear about, uh, you know, Palm Sunday it is today. People like to hear about the Hosanna. People like to hear about, here comes God on the donkey. People like to hear about the Jesus that died and he loved everybody. I want to tell you tonight, yes, he did. But there's a condition. There's a condition of him coming. There's a condition of his love. There's a condition of the crucifixion. And the condition is this, that we need to turn to him. That we need to turn away from our sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all, and tonight my friend, oh, for all means you. For all means every man and woman on the face of this earth. For all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And sin, my friends, tonight is what's going to cut you off. Sin is what separates you from God. That when Jesus comes, when he comes for the people who's waiting for him, that it's your sin that will separate you and cut you off from him. That when you die, when you breathe your last, it's your sin that will cut you off from God. What is sin tonight? Sin is all wrongdoing. You don't have to be a murderer tonight. You don't have to be a big bad person tonight to be a sinner. For all have sinned. I tell a little lie. You are a sinner. If you've ever took a penny sweet that wasn't your own, you're a thief. If you've ever gossiped, you're a sinner. If you've ever slandered people, backbited. My friends tonight, God doesn't measure sin. I mean you measure sin. God doesn't measure sin, that it's only bad people who sinners, but normal old people like ourselves is okay, I want to tell you no. For all have sinned, for all deserve hell, for all are cut off from the presence of God. But I want to tell you tonight, there's good news tonight, that the harm of the Lord is not too short to save. Because God looked down upon the earth once again, just like he did in the days of Noah. And he seen that mankind was so wicked, that mankind had gone so wrong, that mankind had gone so selfish, living for the self, get them what they can, any way they can, not thinking about anybody else but the self, not thinking about God. He looked down and he seen the danger of mankind and where there was heading. You know, my friends tonight, he was listening. There's a place called hell and a place that's real. And you know, God, he doesn't want no man to perish. He doesn't want no woman to perish and no woman to go to this place. But it's because of your sin tonight, my friend, what will take you to this place. And tonight you might cut off, you might block your ears and you don't want to hear about this place. But this is a place where the sinner ends up. This is a place of pain and torture forever. This is a place where how to darkness of torture and torment cut off from the presence of God forever and ever and ever being tormented. The Bible says where you'll be weeping, where you'll be screaming and crying and begging and gnashing of teeth in pain and suffering for all eternity. How long is forever? I don't have the words to tell you. Forever is out of time. Forever is just forever. For billions and trillions and trillions of years in pain and suffering and torture and then just to start all over again and keep repeating in pain and burning and suffering. Where you'd be wishing you could die but you can't. Where you'll be burning in pain. Where you'll be tormented and tortured for all eternity. Hell is a place where you'll be alone getting tormented and tortured. Hell is in a place where you'll be with your friends. Hell is in a place where you'll be with your family having a good time. Hell is in a place where you, you'll have a drink and a dance. The Bible talks about hell being a place of punishment. 
a place of gloomy dungeons. A place where God doesn't want no man to go. You know tonight, my friends who's listening, there's good news to this message tonight. There's good news as a second part. There's two sides to the coin. Tonight, these people in the days of Noah, they didn't want to listen to the good news. But guess what tonight, church? Guess what tonight, people? You have a choice. You have a chance tonight. His name is Jesus. Because my God so loved the world that he sent his son to die for you. That if you will just believe, that you will believe, that you will act upon, that you will do something about it tonight. Do you will acknowledge that Jesus is God? Do you will acknowledge that you're a sinner? Do you will acknowledge that he died? And how did he die? He died with an unthinkable death. You know, the Bible says that he, that he was spit upon. The Bible says that Jesus, my God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that he was mocked, that he was humiliated. The Bible says that his flesh was ripped from his body, that his beard was ripped from his face, that the soldiers whipped him, a big legion of soldiers, that they whipped him and they mocked him, that they ripped his flesh from his body, that they rammed a crown of thorns and beat it on his head. The Bible says that he didn't look human anymore, that he was beat that bad. The Bible teaches that he was stripped naked and he was hung upon a cross and his hands and his feet was nailed upon that cross and he done that for me and for you my God he took my place he took your place he took your punishment because of sin because there was no way out because the only way that there could be a forgiveness was by the shedding of blood there had to be a sacrifice my friends tonight who's listening sin it has to be paid for and do you know what God done? He placed your sin, your punishment upon himself. He hung there upon the cross. And he said, do you know what? Do you know them people who's on that site? Do you know them people who's listening to that recording? Do you know them people who's living in sin? I'm going to die for them. Because the punishment for that sin is hell. And I love them so much, I don't want them to go there. That if they will just accept it, that I will die for them. My friends who's listening tonight... Jesus Christ was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And do you know what he said? As the people punched him in the mouth, the people slapped him in the face, the people spit on him and mocked him, made fun of him. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. And he hung there upon the cross. Were you tonight? He hung there on the cross, bleeding to death. Were you tonight who doesn't care? He had you on his mind. You know all the wrong that you've done that maybe nobody else knows about? Do you know the sin that you've committed? You know each and every day the wrong that you've done, the things that you've done in secret? He hung there for you. He hung there for that sin to pay that price. And he gave up his spirit. He gave up his life and he said, it is finished. And do you know what they done? They took him down up off the cross and they put him in a tomb and they buried him. And he was in the tomb for three days. He was in the grave, he was buried, he was dead. But glory to God, on the third day he rose, hallelujah. And because tonight Jesus is alive, because tonight Jesus is the Son of God, because tonight he is the Saviour, the Lamb, who came to take away the sins of the world, tonight he can forgive you. Tonight he can save you. Tonight he wants to reach out, and he wants to pick you up, out of your sin, and he wants to forgive you and wash you clean. He wants to put you on a brand new road, a brand new direction. Do you no longer on your way to hell? Do you no longer on your way to destruction? Be on your way to glory? Do you on your way to heaven? You know, tonight I've preached and I've told you what the Word of God says about hell, about how bad of a place it is. But I want to tell you people who's listening tonight, heaven is a place that I don't have the words to describe because it's going to be so good. Heaven is a place where the Bible says that the streets are solid gold. That there'll be no more doctors, there'll be no more cancers, there'll be no more viruses, there'll be no more deaths, there'll be no more tears. Just a place in the presence of God forever and ever. But tonight you have a choice. Just like these people back in the days of Noah, they had a choice. You have a choice tonight to listen. I don't come here tonight to entertain you. I haven't come tonight to, to frighten you. I've come tonight to preach the gospel to you. 
I come tonight to share the good news with you. Just like Noah told these people. But tonight, my friends, the choice is yours. Tonight, God is a gentleman. The Bible says he knocks. He knocks and stands and waits at the door. But you've got to let him in. These people, they didn't want to know. These people, they didn't want the boat. They didn't want the safety. And we preach today, every week, every day, to tell people about Jesus. And nobody wants to know. People will tell you, I know God in my own way. I know God. But yet they won't share the scriptures with you. Yet they won't listen. Yet they will be ignorant. They'll close the doors in your face. They'll laugh. They'll tell you, I've got a religion. I've got God. I want to tell you tonight, you need Jesus. I want to tell you tonight, you don't get your religion and chuck it away. I want to tell you tonight, get the God that you've made yourself, the God that's okay with sin, and chuck him away because he's no good for you. That God's going to take you to hell. I preach tonight about the God of heaven and earth. The God who came and died. The God who won on the cross. The only God. There's no other name under heaven given to man in which we can be saved. But the name of Jesus. My God is Jesus. And he wants to save you tonight. You know tonight, not to frighten anybody because there's a lot going on in the world. But the Bible talks about nobody's promise tomorrow. That today is the day of salvation. That today we must listen. Today we must be right with God. Nobody's promised tomorrow. You know, as we look around today in this world, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of chaos. But I want to tell you, people today, wherever you are, wherever you keep in, I don't care if you've got enough shopping to last you 10 years. I don't care if you don't go out and you don't meet nobody ever again. I want to tell you, one day you will die. One day you will breathe your last. You need to be ready to meet God. You need to be ready. Are you ready? How do you know you're ready? By accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. By willing to repent of your sins. To turn away. To stop doing. Change direction. And follow Jesus. Let's just pray tonight. People on this place. People on the recording. Pray tonight. I just pray that God by his spirit tonight would, would just minister to your life tonight. You know, you've heard the word of God. I know it would have touched people's hearts tonight. I know the people on the recording, the people on the trailers who's listening. I know tonight you know it's real. I know tonight that you know you're wrong and Jesus is right. What are you messing about, Dad? What's stopping you from surrendering? What's stopping you tonight from giving your life to him? The Bible says that when in Christ we are a new creation, the old is gone and the new has come. And a challenge, I want to ask you a question tonight. When did you become a new creation? When did the old man and woman be put to death? When did the new man and woman come? You know tonight, if, if you want to accept this message that I've preached tonight, if you want to accept that Jesus is Lord and Savior, if you want him in your life tonight, if you want a guaranteed home in heaven, if you want to be forgiven tonight of your sins, I want you to say a little prayer. How do we be saved? Just say these words. Just say, Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, I know that you came and you died on the cross for me. I know you paid the price for my sins. And Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge tonight that I am wrong and you are right. I acknowledge tonight that my standards cuts me off from you. And Lord, as you died for my sins, I pray that you would forgive me and come into my life. Help me be this new creation that the Bible talks about. Let me be new. Let me be forgiven. Wash me clean and help me to walk with you. Lord, come into my life. Tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you said them words tonight, acknowledge, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you are saved, amen. If anybody tonight who's listening, you know you want to you wanna ring me or you want to come and see me, just let me know. You know tonight it's a bit awkward with a with this social distancing and things that we can't be around one another. But I want to tell you tonight, 
You can meet God tonight right where you are. Just say what I've told you to say. But if you've got any questions, everybody's got the number. Just ring me. But most importantly, seek God. God bless you.